It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwing, and you're listening to the All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to a Krypton Report special mini episode. What I've thought about doing is because we live in such a visual society and we consume everything via streaming and watching. And, you know, a lot of times those are the only times that people are exposed to characters. And I've always kind of leaned heavily on the visual side of everything because I love movies and always have since I've been a child. And a lot of times that's our first introduction to things. I've noted on the podcast before that the first introduction to the character I think I remember is the Fleischer cartoons because I remember the Fleischer cartoons I remember some comics and then of course the movies but I'm pretty sure because there was so much available at the time I'm pretty sure it was the Fleischer cartoons that I saw first and that stuck with me so what I'd like to do is do these mini episodes and kind of take a step back and we've talked about a little bit I think with each where we did our pilot season episodes. But focusing just a little bit on the people who brought these characters to life. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, you know, with the current ones, which is fine. But let's go backwards. You know, we did our episode on the suits, which helped inform some of these characters. And we did our episode before on the people in the um, pilot season. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is what I've kind of dubbed the forgotten Superman. And it's nothing against the actor at all. It's just because of the style, he has been lost on everybody. Um, So without further ado, I'd like to introduce this episode, the forgotten Superman, Kirk Allen. Now, Kirk was Superman. Excuse me. Sinus. Some sinus issues going on. Gotta love the summer. Kirk was Superman for what was called the movie serial. They were short 10, 12 minute-ish episodes that would play before a movie back when there was no television. And he was the first live action depiction. Now, there was the 1939 World's Fair, which would be a year after Superman debuted, where Superman was portrayed by actor Ray Middleton. So technically he's the first actor to play Superman. But there's not a lot we can go into about his Superman because it was just for the World's Fair. I wanted to mention him because he often is forgotten and I understand. But Kirk has a little bit more of the legacy because we actually got to watch him act and portray both Superman and Clark. But I do want to give the shout out to Ray so that everyone knows I'm not skipping Ray Middleton. Now, let's talk about Kirk Allen. Kirk Allen was born October 8th, 1910. And sadly passed away March 14, 1999. He was born John Frago Jr. He was an American actor best known for being the first actor to play Superman in the 1948 movie Serials and its sequel in 1950. Them being Superman and then <clears throat> Adam Man vs. Superman. Well, that's pretty awesome, first of all. I think that's about 10 years after the comics. And we're getting, you know, the live action Superman. He was also. In Superman the movie, if you watch Superman movie, the I think it's labeled as the extended cut on the train where Lois, young Lois Lane, is sitting and she is looking out the window, you will see Kirk sitting there reading the newspaper as General Sam Lane or Dr. Sam Lane. I'm pretty sure it's Dr. Sam Lane because the general part didn't come later. And Noel Neal is playing Lois Lane's mother. And that's one of those nods I don't think a lot of people caught. Once again, I think Kirk often gets overlooked because of the strong presence that George would have and, of course, George's legacy that he would leave behind. Kirk was born in Oxford, New Jersey, to Hungarian immigrant parents. In his youth, he lived in Wharton, New Jersey. He started as a chorus boy for Broadway plays, appearing in notable musicals such as Girl Crazy, Although I Sing, and... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that during the 1930s. He also worked as a singer and dancer in vaudeville. And vaudeville was kind of like the segue to Hollywood back when you had like traveling stage shows and productions, singers. Um, it was like theater, but a little bit different. The Three Stooges had a very strong 
vaudevillian presence before they segue to their cereals. And I guess, you know what? I guess that's the best way to describe cereals. Now I think about it is the three stooges. Their shows and movies were kind of like little cereal, little episodes before larger production of film. There is a great biography, autobiography that Kirk wrote that was called a job for Superman. And it's interesting that Kirk Allen, when he made his debut as Superman, he was 37 years old. A lot of times in the comics when they try to say Superman appeared, he's around 30, um, late 20s, you know, 30. And it's interesting because, as we'll get later in these episodes, <laughs> Gerard Christopher was older and he played the label of Superboy compared to actors such as Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill when they premiered as Superman. That's not for a while. George would also be 37 when he premiered as Superman. Now, as I stated, the movie serials were 1948, and then the sequel was 1950. That, and then those are collected. You can get those on DVD. Uh, I have not seen a Blu-ray release. They were streaming before on the wonderful app that we all miss called DC Universe. Just because I love DC Universe for the heritage, the old aspect, which is what this would fall into. Um, it is not currently streaming. I also advise anyone who's interested, check your local library. Libraries are great resources for a lot of things. Now, Kirk had a very large <clears throat> excuse me, background in acting. But the thing is, if you study and look at his credits, a lot of it, he was uncredited. I mean, his first labeled role was Fast and Loose as Man Seated at Table, uncredited, 1930. And he did shorts. And it's just amazing how much work that he was a part of before he was actually credited. I think his first big, let's see, The Man from Rio Grande is Tom Trainer as an editor. Overland Mail Robbery, 1943, is Tom Hartley. And just going through here, he's still doing lots of uncredited. Until about 1944, it looks like he starts to get a stream of productions where he starts to get labeled. And now, as we said, Kirk Allen technically was a stage name. In 1947, he appears Little Miss Broadway as Detective Lieutenant Mel O'Brien as Kirk Allen. Same thing with Sweet Genevieve in 47, which leads us to 48, where he appears as Superman. His last credited work appeared in 2018, the Halloween Planet TV movie as The Watcher. I'm going to have to track that down. Could be... Very interesting because that's after he passed. Um, before that, scalps as Professor Machen in 1983. So, interesting, interesting career for a man. Like I said, he's often credited as the Forgotten Superman. Now, here's a, um, here's a quote from Kirk about Superman. I thought it was a publicity stunt. I didn't think you could ever put Superman on film. They brought the people from DC Comics over and... And they said, hey, he looks just like Clark Kent. They said, take off your shirt. So I did and flex my muscles. Then the guy said, take off your pants. And I said, wait a minute. I was 37 when I played Superman. I picked up that girl and I ran up that flight of stairs like it was nothing. <laughs> so that's, you know, it just gives you an insight into the kind of man that Kirk was. Now, Kirk played Superman for the first like I said, live action serial. The serial consists of 15 episodes, which recount Superman's arrival on Earth, getting a job at the Daily Planet, meeting Lois Lane, who was portrayed by Noel Neal, and Jimmy Olsen. The main plot consists of Superman's battle against the arch criminal Spider Lady. Interesting, right? Spider Lady, who I think in a lot of fans' eyes has kind of almost gotten lost. Now, if you're currently reading the Batman Superman adventure, or, no, nah, sorry, not adventures, that sometimes gets lumped up with the Batman Superman comic. Right now, the Infinite Frontier, the Spider Lady, is kind of mentioned. Won't spoil anything for that. Now, two years later, during the Adam Man vs. Superman, when it was released featuring Lyle Talbot, who plays Superman's first iteration of Luthor. Now, I am not sure if it's Lex Luthor or just Luthor. I'm pretty sure it's just Luthor. I don't have the serials to, rep to reference. I do have a copy of the Spider Ladies. But I do not have the Adam Man vs. Superman. I would like to own it. Now, what's interesting is it includes a sequence that is very reminiscent of what we would say the Phantom Zone is, but yet this, the Phantom Zone does not appear in comics for another letters. Alan gave the Man of Steel a different portrayal of Clark Kent 
adding elements to the disguise. This was the tradition of radio Superman Bud Collier. By contrast, his successor, George, played the dual roles more alike, as pointed out in Gary Grossman's book, Superman Serial to Serial. That's Serial with an S and Serial with a C. So Kirk tried to play the two differently compared to like we, we'll get into with George. The character's flight was affected by having Alan jump up, at which point he became represented by an animated character by way of rotoscoping, which flew away. Alan had tried flying while suspended by hidden wires for the first serial, but the wires turned out to be clearly visible and the footage was scrapped. Wow, would that be awesome to get a hold of somehow, to see that. After playing Superman, he gained and suffered casting problems, which sadly seems to be... You know, part of the quote-unquote Superman curse that actors supposedly have. And it's sad because um, they're great actors. I think everyone who's played the character did a great job as the character, and that's really what they're known for. Um, But, you know, we'll discuss that as we keep going. Apart from featuring in some similar comic books type serials, he had few roles in television series and movies, some even uncredited until he retired. Allen was reportedly offered the part of Superman for the television version in 51, but refused it. In 71, he published an autobiography called A Job for Superman. Allen shared a very brief cameo with his co-star, Noel Neal, in Superman the movie. In 1981, Allen appeared as Pa Kent in a parody of Superman. Hmm. Allen made his final movie, the horror movie Scalps, in 1983. In 1988, he participated in the 1988 TV special, Superman 50th Anniversary, special as himself. He also had a very brief appearance in Battlestar Galactica episode. Now, that 50th Anniversary special, I believe, is one of the features on the DVD or Blu-ray box set, if you bought, that contained Superman the movie, um, Superman the movie, the, the extended cut, Superman 2, Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut, Superman 3, Superman 4, Superman Returns. And then it also has the documentary, Look Up in the Sky, the story of Superman. Uh, It has the Super Pup trailer, or pilot, excuse me. I think it has the 50th anniversary. I like that box set a lot. I have it. It's packed away because we are in the process of moving. And I wish they just would have included the Supergirl movie in that set. But that's a whole other story because it just would have probably done better. When Kirk first went to Hollywood, he met another dancer-actress, Virginia O'Brien. They were married in 42 and had three children, and they were divorced in 55. Alan died on March 14, 1999, in in Woodland, Texas, at the age of 88 from Alzheimer's disease. He was cremated, and his ashes were scattered off the coast of California. Now, this is, I think, something very interesting that I learned from speaking to Jim Hambrick. And we'll get into who Jim is. Alan was granted Marshal of the Metropolis, Illinois Christmas Parade and annual Superman ce- celebration several times. In 1985, DC Comics named Alan as one of the honoraries in the company's fifth anniversary publication, 50 Who Made DC Great. Now, Jim Hambrick runs the Superman Museum that I've talked about many times in Metropolis. I did an episode a few years back with Jim and his daughter, Morgan. And we talked about the museum and how it came to be, but Jim talked about, and this is why I use the title that I did, was that he knew Kirk. Him and Kirk were actually friends. Kirk was actually Jim's best man at his wedding. And Kirk told Jim, please don't let me be the forgotten Superman. And that's why I titled this episode, The Forgotten Superman, because I don't want that to be the case, because if you've played the Man of Steel, you deserve at least some recognition and to be known in the consciousness uh, my father was born in 57, and I had a picture hanging up in my cave of solitude of George and Kirk, and they were kind of spaced out, and my dad noticed the George. like, oh, that's cool. The, you know, he was the first Superman. I said, no, Dad, he was the second. And I showed him the picture of Kirk and, you know, talked about it. And it just kind of shows that even people of the time, you know, my dad saw, of course, the George Reeves series and everything. Didn't know about Kirk. I didn't learn about Kirk, you know, till much later. And part of it is because we didn't have the resources. You know, the serials weren't available to really watch or see, see or participate in. And, you know, one of the best things to happen, I think, to Superman media was 2006's Superman Returns. Now, I say that because I remember 
I worked a job and I got off around midnight. Um, and I got off work and I went to Walmart. It was around the corner from where I was working. And they had a huge display in the middle. And it was Superman. And they had all the media for sale. And it was great because right there set the DVD. You could, I remember, you could like find season one for everything. And I bought season one of Lois and Clark, season one of Superboy, because I knew that that show existed, but it felt like no one else knew that it existed. And, you know, this is 06. The internet's coming, like, to its full steam ahead. You know, we, we had the internet, but we didn't yet have it really in our, in our pockets like we do now. And you, there was the cartoon, and there was the first season of The Adventures of Superman. There was all the Christopher Reeve movies, which was great because... I didn't own them because I couldn't find them. They were very hard to find at the time. And then there set a DVD of the serials. And that's when I was like, oh, what is this? And that's like, oh, this is, I remember hearing about these. But I first had the connection of who and what it all was. So that is my summary of Kirk Allen. This was something I wanted to do, put together rather quickly. I apologize. This is, it's been really kind of a crazy time right now, but I really wanted to bring bring it up and let people know. Um, the last thing is the Superman serials were first made available for purchase on VHS tape in 1987. The serials were offered in two separate VHS tapes as volume one and volume two of the two films, Superman and Superman versus the Atom Man. So right there you go. Now I remember VHS was, you know, it was everywhere, but I never remember seeing it. Uh, like I have a story I'll share and I'll share it again, I guess with Superman three. I didn't see Superman 3 till a lot later because I always wanted to see it. But at the video store that was by our house, it was always gone. And that's because the tape had been lost and damaged, but they still had the empty box sitting on the shelf. Now, Warner Brothers got the rights back because the rights in the, for the serials were originally produced by Columbia. Columbia was the powerhouse back then for serials, I swear, because that's where the three studios were and everything. And with the previous 2006 DVD release out of print for a few years, like I was talking about, on October 9th, 2018, the serials were re-released as a manufactured on-demand DVD from Warner Archive Collection. Warner Archive is great because it's basically you order it, they print it, and send it to you. It's, it's really kind of neat. I like physical media, and that's probably how I'll end up having to get mine if I can't find the 2006 uh, DVD set, which I'm also a big fan of used stuff. I think there's just, I don't know, there's character to use books and DVDs and I'm, I love going to half price books. In conclusion, so I don't ramble, this is Tyler signing off on Kirk Allen. Check him out. At least watch, you know, the chapter one and two, Superman Comes to Earth and Depth of the Earth to get a sense of who his Clark is, his origin, his Superman, and you'll be surprised at how much you will like Kirk. So, you know, even in his limits of what he was technically able to do, there's some great things that he was able to bring out in the character. So remember. Look at it in the sky!